you ever feel like there are forces working against you to get your lawn mowed? Well, that sucks. That's how I feel today. So it looks like I'm gonna have plenty of time to do a video today. Welcome back to Chicanic. When I first started my channel, I made a short little video on how to install trimmer line on your Speedfeed 400 or 450 or the Steel AutoCut 25-2. Um, I got lots of comments on there on how to actually take the heads off. I know when I have a customer come in and I'm selling them a new Speedfeed head, nobody has an idea on how to get their old head off and install the new one. And if it's a different kind of trimmer, what kind of guts to put in it to actually make it work on their trimmer. As we all know, the worst thing about trimming is running out of line and having to re-spool your head. So today we are going to go over the best trimmer head ever made, how to get you going, strings in 30 seconds, you're ready to rock the Speedfeed 400 or 450. So the Speedfeed came out with two different sizes. They have the 400 and the 450. Um, most all trimmers will take the 400. Um, the 450 is, is much larger. It's mostly for trimmers that are probably at least 25, 26 cc's and above. Um, the 400, it holds about 20 feet of line. I usually put about 14 just, just so I don't get, get it too cram full, but it will take 95 or uh, 105 line. So first, let's go over how to remove the old heads. The Husqvarna and the steel are quite similar. They have a hole on the back of the gearbox right here. On the steel, it's got is right here. And we're going to find something to stick in that hole so we can lock the head in place. So on this Husqvarna, we're going to stick something down in this hole and we're gonna twist it until the head locks and it can't move anymore. On most trimmers, it's if you're standing behind the gearbox, it's lefty loosey, righty tidy. So we're going to turn it to the left, and we got the head off. On the steel head, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to stick something in that hole. We're going to push down until it locks into place, and we're just going to twist it off. Now, one thing to watch whenever you are replacing your head on a steel is it has this back plate. And if you're going to put a blade on or something like that, this, this lifted up area right here is where that blade would sit. Now, what I have seen people do, and they bring their trimmers into the shop because once you do this, you can't get it back apart, is they accidentally put this part on upside down. That is not good. Once you do that, you won't have anything to lock into to ever get your head off again, and it is stuck. So on the Shindawas and the Echoes, they do it a little different. Instead of coming down through the gearbox like this, it's got a little hole in the back base right here. If you turn it, you can see it line up with a hole in the gear head. We're gonna stick something in sideways, which will lock it in place, and we'll be able to remove it that way. So we're gonna stick our tool in, lock it, and twist off. So if you're installing this on a straight shaft trimmer, whenever you take off like the back base for your steel or the back base for your Husqvarna, if you see a raised lip around the center here, that is where you would put a blade on if you were going to be doing brush cutting. So they come with this spacer washer and the inside has the perfect size to fit over that raised part to give you that extra support you need and also to close the gap to where fishing line and grass and weeds won't get stuck in between the head and your back plate. So to put your speed feed on a Husqvarna, you are going to use a spacer if you see that part there, if it's not flat. And then you'll be able to, if you're on this side of it, it's tightening to the left, so it's counterclockwise. The good thing about the speed feeds though, all of the new Husqvarna's, the Echo's, and the new Shindawa's, the or, uh, gold arbor that's already inside of it, it goes right on. You don't have to change nothing out. You're ready to roll. So we're going to go ahead and hold the back base while we put the head back on till it's pretty tight. 
we're gonna flip over. We're gonna put the tool back in our little hole so we can tighten it down the rest of the way. And you're ready to go. So now moving on to the steel, it also has that raised lip for the blade. So you're gonna to wanna to use that spacer, but we're going to have to change out the arbor in the center because steel has different threads. Okay, so to put it on steel, we're gonna to have to take it apart and change out the green arbor on each side. Well, you can take this back base off first. On each side, it has these push-in prongs. You're going to push one side, push the other side, and your top cap's gonna to come off with your spring. You're going to take your spool out and go ahead and take the string out because you don't want it getting all wound up while you're doing this, and we'll just reinstall it when we're done. Inside is the gold arbor. We're gonna have to take that out and put the green, uh, green one in. So I find something, you know, about that size. Push down on the center. Got the gold one out. We're gonna put the green one inside. This cylinder shape goes in first and it sits down here like that and then we're just gonna push it in to where it's seating in place right in there and sticking out like so now we grab our back base we're going to put this back in place on a straight shaft you're going to have the L coming out if whenever you put your spool in on these you won't have to take these apart in the future but just in case you're doing this Whenever you put your spool in, there's this lip right here, if you have the L up correctly, to where it gives it that room to bump and move up and down. If you put it in upside down, this is sunk in, there is no room to bump and your head will not work. So you're going to put the L up, make sure you've got that bumping room right there. We're gonna reattach the cap and put the back base back on. There you go. Then to put the head back on the steel, just like the last one, you got your spacer in place to cover up where your blade would normally sit. You go ahead and start screwing it on. It's lefty, tidy, righty, loosey on these. Tighten it up. Then you're going to stick something in the hole in the back and tighten it up like that. If you have a curve shaft trimmer, You'll take the black insert out and you'll put in the white one and it already has the threads. Now this fits the curve shaft, Echoes, Home Lights, Husqvarna, Mariami, Shindawa. So um, you'll use the white insert for the curve shaft trimmers. When you do use the white insert, instead of having the L sticking out at you, you'll have the R, which means that it turns the other direction and works just like that. Last but not least, the Shindawa T242X, which is my personal trimmer. I love it. It is the most awesome trimmer ever made, light, powerful. Um, the only thing is it's a little different putting the head on. Um, the newer Shindawas, they will, you could spin this gold one uh, arbor right onto them, but the older models, you had to put in another little piece of arbor. Now the black one, that one goes for the curve shaft trimmers. Um, the silver and gold one, they go for the straight shaft trimmers, depending on which trimmer you have. If you don't like to read instructions like I do, just try either one, you'll figure it out. But the um, one I have today takes the gold. So we're going to make sure that's the one that fits in there. It screws right in, yes it does. So we're going to put it in the back of the head first. Just like so. Now it's in there, and then we're going to attach it to the gear head. Lefty tidy, righty loosey. Once we have that tightened down, hand tight, we're going to stick something in the side here and tighten it down the rest of the way. All right, we got that tight now, and now we're gonna reinstall our line so I can uh, do at least some weed eating today.
So now we're to the most awesome part about owning a speed feed, how easy it is to put line in. I swear it'll take you longer to find your line in your garage than it is to put trimmer line back into this head. So whenever you run out of line, it shoots the last couple inches out. It has an arrow on this back base, but it also has a little arrow bump right here, directly on the other side, another arrow and an arrow bump. You'll take this back base and hold on to it as you turn the top part of the head to line the eyelets up with the arrows. Whenever you do that, there's a big gaping hole going all the way through. You'll pull out about up to 20 feet of line, they say. I put about 14 to 16. You're going to slide the line through. You're gonna make sure that it's hanging out even on both ends. Once you've got it hanging out even, you're gonna grab this back base and I'm wrenching it in. I'm actually, I'm pulling it towards me as I'm turning this this way. So I'm grabbing, turning, grabbing, turning. Turning this way, pulling back this way. Wow, how easy was that? So last but not least, do not forget to lube your gear head. These heads run at thousands of RPMs and they get hot and most customers don't even know that they need to lube it. So I am going to put a link down below for the Red Armor Lithium Grease and also for the Speed Feeds 400 and 450. And let's show you how to put grease in your head. So on most all trimmers, they either have a 10 millimeter bolt or like on the steels they've got a 13 millimeter bolt they do have like this one has a t27 star in the center but you're not going to want to do that because over time it just it'll wear out and strip out and it's easier just to go around the outside than try to go into it through the inside so we're going to grab a tool and we're going to take this plug out and give it some lube so i've got my 10 millimeter socket for my shindawa trimmer i'm going to remove the grease bolt. And that goes directly to the gearbox. We're going to just stick it to that. And while we're squishing, I'm gonna be turning the head to get it to go inside and, and lubricate it correctly. You want to get as much as you can in there until you start see it start squishing out. Now we're done. <sighs> no excuse now. Now I got a weeded. So yes, that speed feed head works amazing. It is the best trimmer head ever made and super easy to use. If you'd like to get one yourself, I am link leaving links below for the um, speed feed 400, the 450, the grease. Um, go down and check it out. If you could find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash chicanic. Once again, if you haven't liked or subscribed, don't forget to do that. Thank you all so much for over 17,000 subscriptions and over a million views. That is amazing to me. I'm hoping that I save you time, money, and hopefully frustration in the future. So thanks again for watching. Have a great day.